welcome back to another episode of the Millennial Girls Podcast. I am Raquel and, and I am Natasha. And ooh, we got that like spike of caffeine just came through my veins right now. I just had OJ, so I need it. I am in need of a coffee. I know. You were like, can you stop at Dunkin'? And I was like, I'm almost at your house. Sorry. I was so ready for you to just go in the drive-thru. We could have our Dunkin' right here in front of us and then be like, sponsor us, please. But oh God, it's okay. Oat milk now. Anyway, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> I have a very important question to ask on this episode, episode number 22. Girl code and guy code, is mm. it all just relative? And the only question, not the only question, the only reason I'm asking that question is because I was watching a show the other night that I totally binged two seasons, wait no, two seasons, one season in like a day and a half. It's a K-drama, guys. I mean, of course. Of course. <laughs> K-Korean, you know, drama. If, if you uh, don't know Raquel personally just yet, she's obsessed with anything having to do with Korean culture at the moment. So K-pop, is great. any of these like soap operas, it's all in Korean, guys. Yeah. So she's having to, what, read subtitles? subtitles. But I read and... them like I'm in a t- reading a teleprompter <laughs> and in my head I'm talking in my broadcast broadcast voice. Oh so God. it actually is helping with the career. <laughs> anyway, it's a really great show. They really, like the acting's insane. But on the show, okay, it's the main girl, obviously. Okay. And these two guys are best friends. Okay. So one's a model. He comes back from modeling in America, of course. And duh. <laughs> duh. And the other one works at a restaurant and with the girl, and they all go to school together. Okay. The best friend who comes back from America, the model, like low-key knows his best friend, who also lives at their mansion, by the way, because his mom is like their housekeeper or something anyway. Okay. He knows that she kind of he has a crush on this girl. Right. Okay. But he asked him multiple times do you like her what's going on do you like her do you like her do you like her do you like her and he's like no I don't like her like he flat out says I don't like her I don't want anything to do with her well model homeboy yes kisses her yeah and then they start dating and it's like this whole you know Netflix dramatic like teenage love yeah trying blah 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 but then they fast forward four years and it like time they broke up. Yeah, and well, it, it, like, time jumps. Okay. And now the girl is going to college with the best friend. The other guy. The other guy. They run into each other, and he asks her out. Finally, after and, four and the, years. But the best friend gets super mad because he she broke his heart. Okay. And... Yeah, it's a love triangle. It's, so it's, you have... is But, like, is that okay? Like, right. my whole thing, like, even I was watching it, I was like, ooh, I don't know about all this. This is some... This is some like, I thought, like, girl code, guy code, but if the person never actually admits the crush, is it technically, you know, doing that? Is it wrong? I mean, who, okay, if you had to choose right now, do you think one of them's wrong or not? One of the guys? Or do you think the girl's the one that's wrong? <laughs> well, it's different from my opinion now, because obviously I saw both sides of it. If I, okay. if I didn't see the other guy, the best friend at first, like, working with her and having a crush on her, I feel like I'd be like, whatever. I would probably pin it on him years later to date that, date her. That he didn't admit it to begin with. Correct. But like, obviously you see it as the person watching. So you're like, Uh, I'm kind of uncomfy. Yeah. I mean, okay, this is, this is what I personally think. Obviously let us know what your guys' thoughts are too. I'm sure many of us have had some kind of experience relating to girl code or guy right. code. But I feel like the fact that he didn't admit it to begin with, and then he finally ends up like kind of, let's say, fulfilling like what he had always really truly wanted, like being true to himself. I think it's okay on that front. But on the other side, obviously. That should be me. The guy. <laughs> Whose song is that? I don't know. Is it a boy band? It sounds like it. <laughs> Which one's that one? I don't know. But the other guy who was, let's say, had the balls to begin with and was like, you don't like her, right? You don't like her, right? Okay, now I'm going to date her because I like her. And then he got his heart broken. Yeah, he asked. I mean, technically, yeah. I mean, guy code is, if we're going to go strictly based on rules... I mean, the yeah. other the other yeah. guy shouldn't have gone out with his ex girlfriend, right? And then it, it totally drove a wedge between their friendship. He of ended up moving out, and they got in a huge fight. No, but I think <laughs> I think we still ask the question: Do you believe in a girl and a guy code? Is I, there a girl code? Or I, is there a guy code? I just code? think maybe it's. I don't even think it's a cold. A cold. 
code. Oh, I thought you were going to say a cult. I was a like, cult. what? Maybe that too. <laughs> but like, I don't even think it's a, it's a code. I think it's just being a good person. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, when you are faced with a situation, you have a choice. I mean, do is, you, is do you this going to make me look like an asshole? Right. Are you going to backstab a person or are you going to have some integrity? And at the end of the day, when it comes to dating, there is... There are millions of people around There's the world. Like plenty of fish in the sea. This is what I'm saying. Like, that's the part that also blows my mind, which, like, I, okay, I can't believe I'm going to go there, but I'm going to go there. I had a situation. Um, this is many years ago, like, many, many years ago now. Many moons. And basically, I was becoming friends with my friend's boyfriend at the time, who I had okay. originally hated. I hated uh-huh. him because okay. I didn't like how he treated. Wow, I'm like blushing because I'm I'm like nervous and embarrassed. Um, and I was like, I don't want anything to do with this guy because I don't like how he's treating you, whatever. And it was very like long, like it was going from like when we were 18 all the way to like 20. So mm-hmm. like it was a long thing. We all kind of grew up, and she was like asking me, please, like please, like be friends with him. Like I don't want you guys to have issues and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna get into dirty details, but there was just like a lot going yeah, on when we lived together and all this yeah. stuff. And so I was like, okay, fine. You know what? I'm going to step outside of myself. I'm not going to just like hate this guy when she's like still in love with him, dating him. Like, well, I'm just going to sit here hating all the time. Like, no. So, I do. <laughs> no. And so, I mean, that's he's how, trash. No, I used to be like that too. But then eventually, like, I was like, I got over it. Like, why do I need to like have this hate towards someone when like she's fine? Like, why do I need to hold that feeling? So, yeah. you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, screw it. So, and whatever, we became like friends over time and like through the years he he did become better and stuff, but I always had like, you know, that feeling in the back of my mind. Then one day, I can't believe I'm saying this right now, I'm having a heart attack. Um Brave. we Brave. we 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 hung out and they were kind of like getting like towards the end of their relationship. They were fighting a lot and it was kind of like just breaking off. And so she would always tell and I would ask her, same as your K-pop so, drama. I asked her K-drama. like would you feel fine if we hang out ourselves? Okay. And oh, she no. would always be like, yes. Oh. So, okay. Because she wanted us to be really cool with each other. Okay. But, of course, we, like, took it too far. And, okay, wait, hold on. Hold your horses. Because, okay. But we went out. We, like, had some margaritas, whatever. And we had too many margaritas. So, we end up going back to his place with his roommates and stuff mm-hmm. like that, whatever. I knocked out. He knocked out. Okay? okay. I'm so embarrassed to say this that I'm saying whatever. But here we are. It happens, I wake up at like, I don't know, in the middle of the night, and I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like, what's happening, what happened, whatever, blah, 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 and like, guy, like, nothing, nothing happened, happened, but I was like freaking out, because I felt like maybe I had just broken girl code in that moment, because I was like, oh my god, like, the fact that I'm even here right now, I just felt like awkward as hell, like, I didn't feel correct, See, it's, it... I, I know, I know, I know. And he was also the same. So his initial reaction, because we were both kind of like, Ugh, he was, he immediately like told her what happened because he didn't want it to be like, we're hiding something. Okay. So he told her like, Hey, we had too many drinks. We crashed and like, Nothing she's driving happened. home now. Like she's going home. So I go home and I, I just felt shame, ashamed of myself because I was like, Oh my God, like here I am the person that like hated this guy. And now we're like two buddies and like, yeah. you know, like. I get it. If if they were, like, not together or, like, with each other and that was just, like, my friend. Yeah. Who cares? Whatever. It's fine. Like, it happens, right? right. But, like, the fact that they were together, it, I don't know. It just, it was, like, weird. So, I got home and my initial reaction, because I didn't know how to react in that time and now I would be different, is I didn't say anything for, mm-hmm. like, a couple days because I was so ashamed of myself okay. And so eventually, I don't know if she had, she had probably reached out to me, maybe that's my guess, because I was like freaked out. Or maybe I finally was like, you know what, if it was the reverse and me being silent looks worse, but I was freaked out. So I ended up, whatever we talked, I think we like agreed to like get together to have, like I invited her to grab dinner or something so that I could like kind of explain or apologize. And we met up for dinner that night and I, (sighs) I don't. I did apologize. I think I said sorry like like three times. Like I was like, you know what? I'm really sorry that that happened. Like obviously, I don't know if I said the words and I'm sure she probably wanted to hear like, oh, it'll never happen again. You know? But you but nothing it, happened. But and you wanted her. She wanted her to be friends with the dude. I know. But see, that's how I felt down the line. But she was like, 
this is gonna change our relationship forever. Like that okay, was her well, reaction maybe towards you me. You have your shitty boyfriend be friends <laughs> with your friends. And so this is where it goes back to. I'm like sweating right now, you guys. I can't believe I just said this, but I knew one day I was gonna say it on the podcast. Because it's like, but like, okay, so here's the thing. So would they rather you be like passed out, passed out in a bush somewhere, and God forbid so something happened to you? So I actually had a boyfriend at the time too. Okay. And he was really good friends with him too. Like we all had like our okay. group. And when I told him, I was even like, I felt like shit about myself. And I like told him and like, hey, this is what happened, whatever. And he reacted like you, like he was like mature about it. And like, even though he didn't feel the most comfortable about the scenario, he was like, if it was me and I was with, you know, her, I almost said her name, (laughs) in the house, um, (laughs) I'm sweating like profusely guys. Um, if, if it was me and her in the house and that would have happened, like, wouldn't you have wanted me to be safe or like not drive or whatever? And I was like, Yes, like, you're right. Like, thank you for, like, trying to justify the situation, whatever. So, anyways, that all happened. That all went down. And at that dinner, I just will never forget when she told me, like, I'm never going to, like, see you the same. And it crushed me. Because, again, she was, like, a childhood friend for a very long time. And that, honestly, that scenario is what broke us off. Are they still together? Forever. They're not. No, because he's a piece of shit. Anyway, moving on. Uh, no, and to be honest, I don't <laughs> even feel like he's a piece. Like, I, I, a lot of stuff, like, happened. Like, I feel bad for him. But, like, I mean, he, at the end of it, I was, like, you know, I mean, I think they, See, they lasted scenario, for, like, a little bit and like, then they broke I up. I honestly really think because, you know, if, if that was me, if it was, like, me dating this guy and I, Natasha, I, I really want you guys to be friends. I want you guys to be friends because we're just, this yeah. is whatever. I would want you to be safe. Yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, you're supposed to trust your friend and your partner so, that you're with. Ooh, oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay, so that was – now it comes all full circle. So we had last said there are plenty of fish in the sea. And this kind of brought about, like, a period in my life. And this is when things, like, really changed for me in my life after, like, the break off of this friendship and then, like, the break off of my relationship. Because mm-hmm. – and, and me breaking up with my just, ex it had nothing to do with it. Like, it was just down the line. Yeah. Like, we broke up. And – I kind of was like wild and free and whatever. And like my friends, I felt like didn't trust me in general. And I was like, that was like the one point I had to make to everyone. I was like, dude, if I was such a shitty person, like if you think that I'm like so, you know, thrilled of having like this kind of lifestyle or whatever, right. I could have already, if I really wanted Slept to try to sleep, sleep with all your boyfriends. I know I sound, I know this dad, please. I'm, I apologize. Um, but, no, but it's, it's, I, it's the point I'm trying thing. to make is like, I never did that. I never, ever Nothing would. Happened. That was never me. Like, even though I, you know, had my own crazy life or whatever, I was having fun. I never would like, no. there's so many other people Talk- that you well, can. <laughs> and that was the thing with the, what happened in college. There's so many other people. Right. So why? You're like, why? And you <laughs> literally did it just out of spite. Right. Like your situation, you literally were being a safe person. Yeah. Well, and, and to be honest, even, even, even in that respect, I mean, I, I was even like happy, like, wow, that, you know, like that he even like let me crash there yeah. too, too yeah. because it's like, what if, I don't know, God what if forbid, I did something happen? I drove, I don't know, yeah. something. So yeah. So yeah, that happened. And, and you know what? That's also on her because if she really wanted you guys to hang out, I feel like if it was me, if I was like, I really want you to hang out with him, I'd be like, Oh, what do you guys do uh, towards the end of dinner? What are you guys doing? How was it? I'm going to come. Right. Show up. Right. That's Sorry. no. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't. Yeah. Wow. wow. Look, no. Look now I'm thinking about that. it. I'm like, wait. How come? How come she wasn't part of it? Like later. That's so weird. Oh my god. Was I like set up for failure, failure? that day? Maybe. Anyways, no. I mean, I'm not sitting. I'm not trying to sit and blame anybody. But like, I, I still like. It's a Again, shame. Blue situation it's a here. shame that I carry with me. That I, like, I hate. Like, I wish I could drop, and it's something that I – it was just a moment that was very hard for me that changed my relationship with my friends. And that was also a scenario where, like, I feel like, you know, after it all, after they broke up, like, why didn't we revisit the friendship? You know what I mean? Right. Like, after they broke up, why couldn't you have at least come – You know what I mean? She has issues. So, it like, it just (laughs) sucked overall. Like, I really – I was like, wow, you're going to choose your guy – over me and, and it wasn't like she broke up with him after that happened she broke up with me right and that's what that goes back to that why aren't you penal penalizing penalizing however you said that word right him too 
I mean, do you think it's worth having a girl or a guy come between your friendship? I don't. I really don't. <laughs> so you will always choose, like, your girlfriend over a guy. I mean, I think it depends on the situation, though. I really do. Because if it's, like, like, I've, we, I've talked about it in a previous episode. One of my best friends from college ended up hooking up with the person I dated. And I was just like, what the hell? But she ended up being a shitty friend pretty much anyway and everything It was unfolded. shitty all around. It was just a shitty situation. Right. And I was just like, all right you're a loser, <laughs> you're yeah. a horrible friend, like, have fun, bye. Yeah. But, but see, okay, wait, 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 so, in that scenario, in Raquel's scenario, if you didn't listen to that episode, go back, she talks all about it. Yeah. But, this is pretty messed up. I think, I, I think in that scenario, when I would have been like, you know what, forgive your girl, like, not forgive your girlfriend, but be like, you know, choose your girlfriend over the guy in that situation, she should have come to you and at least apologized right. or whatever, like because admitted I, to it. And right. then let's say you rekindle your friendship and like whatever, you right. move on and it's girl code like going forward. But since she didn't, then that's why. It right. I mean, I flat out looked her way. in the eye and said, did you do this? And she said no. So she lied to me on top of right. everything. So you guys got to listen to that episode. And but, also, you know. also just to use your story as an example too, I mean, with the guy who was, let's say, kind of between you and your friend at the time we were already broken up too so this was already like right but like that guy okay if you were to say okay I'm gonna choose the guy over my friend I mean again for her in her case because she's more the mm -hmm. issue not you but in that case and she should have been like okay girl code or guy code if you know that going back to like the point that I was trying to make before, sorry about the love alarm show mm -hmm. is that if you know, like deep down in yourself, like right. they were like meant to it be together to, right. or like even from you from the outside, knowing your friend and knowing your ex and you're like, you know what? Like they do really make a good couple or like I could totally see like them being something an item that like right. was more than what we had. I respect that, mm -hmm. but I don't think yeah. that was the case that either. Was not the case because <laughs> I, I get that situation. Like I'm totally right. like, I pay very much attention to things that are happening. I'm always very, yeah. you know, just, I'm, I mean, I successfully match made my two friends and now they're engaged. <laughs> so I definitely pay attention. It happened, it happened this past week. But yeah, I mean, if it was one of those things that like they were totally a better couple together and like we had already broken up and had our issues, he had his issues, we weren't a good fit. It's a different situation, but she kind of just did it because she wanted to do it. Right. So I feel like, it. yeah, yeah it, I feel like it was know. just kind of like, not to say, like, a hookup situation, but just, like, a short-term thing. Like, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. like, oh, they saw each other's in each other's it was life forever kind of thing. tally mark. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mic drop. I mean, it's it's just one of those things, though, that I really was thinking about it during this, like, watching the show. Because it's never – you in shows and stuff, and even in life, it's like, oh, I, you know, whatever. Like you had said, like, if you think it's your true love or whatever. But I was like, mm, I'm not so uncomfortable watching this because I don't know. Yeah. Because it was one of those things that even though he didn't say it, you could still tell. Right. Which is like, oh my God, come on. In that moment, I mean, of course, you're like, suck it up and grow some balls and just freaking go for it. Like, it's like, why'd you even, why'd you even have the fear to begin with? Right. To make that move. And I get it. Like, life happens. And I know, I know that there are stories where it's like people, you know, we're going Reconnect. out with each other. Yeah. And then like, 20 you know, years later. 20, yeah, 20 years later, it's like they, you know, kind of like the love loss and then it's like it comes back or something so dramatic. Uh, I love it. very romantic um I mean it happens but in your case so if now that you you know had your situation and you guys went through the breakup and then you know your friend at that time wasn't your friend anymore because she dated him mm -hmm. etc etc if and you if you were like now in a yeah. current relationship mm -hmm. and you're walking somewhere and you bump into your ex which ex any just yeah, oh, like, yeah. if you're just, if you're in a relationship now, and you, like, you're walking, and you bump into an ex, how does that go down? Like, do you think it's, like, do you think there's a code to, like, handling a confrontation with an ex? I think it depends on the ex, because some of my exes I've been, like, fine with were just, like, okay, it's just not happening, like, yeah, have a nice life, like, see you around when I see you around, and I feel like if it's that situation, it's, like, a high-bye type of thing, but... Because, I don't know, I just feel like it's uncomfortable. It's even more uncomfortable yeah. if you see someone and you don't say hi. Because then right. you're going to, oh, I, it just never fails. You're going to get, like, the DM or the Facebook message or whatever later. Oh, hey, you didn't say hi to me. Like, 
Yeah. I've had that happen to friends who've been like, oh my god, <laughs> guess what happened? And then it just makes it even more complicated because then the person you're with is like, who's that? Why are they messaging you? It's almost mm-hmm. better just to be like, hey, bye, hi, bye, mm-hmm. sup. So you think it's you think it's correct to at least be like cordial and be like, hello. If you guys, I think, ended on okay terms, yes. If it's someone who cheated on you or did something horrible, no, I'd be right. like. Get away. Go away. Don't speak. Right. Don't look in my direction. Yeah. I don't know. I, I That one's a tricky one because I know a lot of people do believe in like having like a relationship or a friendship with an ex and stuff. And I know that it can become extremely tricky. And I think it's just really relative to your situation. I think, yeah. 100%. Because I know that like maybe in the past for me, like I, I was telling Raquel this, like when I was like 14 years old. I had, like, my 14-year-old boyfriend that was, you know, he was, like, my best friend at the time, you know? So we just, like, got along really well. We would hang out, go to football games and stuff, but Mm -hmm. it was very, like, PG. And um, (laughs) Not even 13, just PG. He was so – he was such a great guy. And, like – and then when I – through high school, then, you know, I developed kind of, like, another, like, friendship slash relationship with this guy, too, where we didn't actually go out, but, like, we knew that we liked each other. Mm -hmm. Then I hit 18, and that's when I got, like, my first – I got – that's when I ended up having my first real boyfriend, like, my first serious relationship. And I remember, like, I think it was, like, my 17th or 18th party that we all, like, did this gathering in my garage at my mom's house. Did you place in the bottle? No, no. (laughs) Oh, I never – I was never – I never did that. I wasn't into that stuff. Yeah, no. My friends would, but I would always just be, in, like, on the side watching and judging. But um, <laughs> I I had my birthday party. A friend of mine, like, kind of planned it and, like, invited everyone. So it was super awkward because, like, she just was naive and, like, didn't know, like, the uh. correct way to invite, like, the group of people. So she invited all three of those guys. So I was boyfriend and girlfriend with the guy from when I was 18. The 14. And then the, the one from high school also was there. And also my 14-year-old boyfriend. So, like, wow, all what three a, of them. What a party. All three of them were in the room with me at the same time. And, like, I thought it was the most bizarre thing. Like, I felt, like, pressure and, like, awkward about it at first. But it was so cool because they were actually, like, really cool with each other. Like, they actually, like, got along. Like, it was. I mean, let's be honest. 14 to 18 is a huge, like, age growing up you're growing up I know it's 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 a very it's a very again PG example like again passing 18 and then you know the relationship that I had after I mean I don't think I could have anyone in the same room at this point anymore but yes and that time it did happen it was fine and it was cool because I had always and I've always been a pretty open-minded person when it comes to all that obviously you don't want to dabble into any relationship or have a door open that way but, like, mm. as far as being able to be, like, cordial or respectful, I mean, I'm, I'm for that. But to yeah. each their own. I mean, to each their own, again, I think if it's, you know, if someone cheated on you and, you know, it was a bad situation. Obviously. No, yeah. but if it was just, like, mm, yeah. fizzled, see you when I see you. I mean, but that's the thing, too, though. Do you feel uncomfortable if you're in a relationship with someone and then they have a relationship with their ex? You know what I mean? Because one thing is for yourself. But if you're dating the other person and you know that, like, they were cheated on by this other woman or, like, maybe they, I don't know, they had a very serious relationship with some other woman, would you feel comfortable yourself with them having a relationship? Like, I don't know if I would, especially, like, obviously going forward in life. So, like, from my age now and and older, I mean, an 18-year-old relationship doesn't count anymore. Right. But, like, even now, I mean, like, I don't know if I would feel comfortable with my fiancé, like having a relationship with one of his exes, you know, it's, 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 it's just different. I mean, I've also never had, it's all, it's also just been like cordial. It's never been like, oh my God, we're besties. Yeah, like, you know uh, what yeah. I mean? So I think it just, again, it depends on the situation. If you're cool and you're confident enough to do that and yeah, I don't know. Let I us mean, know if I any of you I've, are I've besties never, with your exes. I've never been in that position, so I don't, you know, I don't know. It's just been kind of cordial situation, yeah. or we've worked in the same industry, so it's, yeah. hey, what's up, but we're like, not like, okay, hey. If I were to really, like, put a, put it in a scenario, like, I know, I, I'm, I'll just speak for myself. I'm not going to speak for my fiancé, but, like, if we were to be walking somewhere and we were to, like, happen to run into an ex-girlfriend that, like, I know from picture or something, like... I would even feel awkward to not just say hi. Right. I would, like, me personally, I would feel awkward. But, like, obviously, you don't want to, like, sit there and be like, let's have a coffee and, like, go for lunch. Like, obviously not. And, like, besties. Yeah. And, like, of course, I mean, this this is the insecurity in me. 
and, and I'll admit that is like, I, of course I would wonder, you know, after what if she messaged him or something, you know right. what I mean? I think so it's, it's the aftermath that's more, <laughs> but I think that's what's awkward if you don't say hi, because yeah. it's always seems like, oh, you didn't, couldn't even say hi to me. I've yeah, gotten that just because I'm blind. I literally yeah. have the worst vision. I need to go to the eye doctor. <laughs> yes. And I'm out and I'll like someone will message me and be like, oh, you didn't even say hi. I'm like, I don't even see you. I can't see like ten, five feet in front of my face. So I didn't even see I'm you. literally like this all the time at every restaurant ordering yeah. and like I can't see anything, driving. I need new glasses. But that, anyway. That is very the personality of your ex too though. Because yeah. I can tell you like I, I maybe have like one person in my mind that like would probably react that way to me too if that if that were to have happened. But if not, everyone else, they wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. They wouldn't have said anything to me. Yeah. And, like, I wouldn't either. If I would have, like, kind of passed by somebody that I knew that, like, I saw them, we know we saw each other, I wouldn't say anything. Mm. Yeah. I'm just, I always, I'm just talking to everyone. I'm always like, hi, 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 hi. Happy little unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious to know if anyone is besties with their ex because, I no, I don't think we are. Yeah, no. I'm that's I'm not. That's not okay. That's not okay on I'm our not, but, like, side of the word life. You guys, I mean, I'm also, like, engaged, so it's just, it's just, it's, yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's a different situation. But... I've been reading the self-help book that Chelsea Briggs told us about on the self-love yourself episode. Yeah. And it literally says, I'm not quoting because I just, you know, <laughs> summarized, but it says, you know, every, every mishap happens to, to guide you in the right way. And I, I truly believe that with work, with friends, with anything in your life. So obviously down the line, who knows, maybe she would have done something super shitty to you and you would have been yeah. hurt even more because it was like the other, other way. And you don't even do anything. Yeah. That's so crazy. I should really be a therapist. <sighs> well, actually, that book, um, if you don't know this already, if you watch on YouTube especially, but I put the links also in our descriptions mm -hmm. for the episodes. I think on it's Apple amazing. Podcasts, the, the links will work. Um, I always put the links in yeah. the description. So the if you guys ever want to see, like, the book recommendations the that she talks about, they're there. Oh, my gosh. I kid you not, <laughs> the first – I got it on Amazon. I got it within, like, a day because – God, y'all. And <laughs> – it's life changing. It truly is. Like I was at the dentist the other day having a panic oh, attack, and it totally, it totally is about you know like giving, opening up your mind and everything for the universe to give you love, and you can't control everything. And I definitely have control issues with like yeah things. And I was literally at the dentist having a full on panic attack, and I was like Raquel, you can't control the variable that's about to happen right now. You need to just lay here. Mm -hmm. And take deep breaths and be okay. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't have an anxiety attack. So, like, and your teeth are clean now. <laughs> my, teeth, my teeth are clean. <laughs> Look at these pearly whites, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really it's really yeah. help. No, a friend of mine, um, she she had sent me Universe Has Your Back years ago because she had read it and she was a super fan. And she sent me tons of book re recommendations, and that was one of them mm -hmm. a long time ago. And I don't remember if I had ever. I remember, like, reading some, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I had ever fully, like, gotten into it. So. I've, I've totally, uh, one of my best friends, Alex, she's, she bought the book, so we're going to have a little book club, so yeah. do a little highlighting. I know. You guys, if I haven't, like, full-on read it or, like, bought the book, so if I buy it, does anyone want to, like, buy it with me What's and we do our club? little book club? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on chapter seven. I've been reading, I've been trying to read a chapter, I've been trying to read a chapter a day, but obviously with everything, it's, it's yeah. not the easiest, but I've been like highlighting and then it'll say like, stop and write this down. So you're writing mm -hmm. down notes and do the lists and it really does help. I think if you, if you write anything down, it's going to stick in your brain. And oh, you're the writing for and sure. And you're subconsciously going to think about I it. I mean, so. at least for me, because I, when I read, I don't retain. Right. Like I'm, I'm reading Elton John's book right now. If you haven't seen his movie too, it's really oh. cool. It's based off it's the so book. It's so great. But, um, oh my god, I saw it twice. It's so good. Um, but yeah, oh. it's just, it's like an autobiography. I, I'm very into autobiographies, so I started reading it the other day because last week's episode, Raquel and I made a pact with you guys that yes. when we wake up in the morning, we're supposed to do something but check our phone. Yes. So I told myself, I was like, you know what, what if I just like dedicate, That's like doing. when I wake up, I when read I like up. maybe like 20 pages in the morning. Still haven't done it yet, but I should challenge myself I mean, to that. Yeah, even <laughs> I've been waking up and reading the book in the morning or because by the time at night I'm so tired and I'm not actually retaining so especially because mm -hmm. of our challenge we're like well <laughs> let's read do it first thing I have a little nightlight for my book too so like do I can, you yeah oh, I'm gonna show it to you so cute 
I'll link that in the description too if, if you're watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I got it on Amazon. I'm pretty we sure. We are going to be <laughs> well read individuals by the end of 2020. Oh my I goodness. I love it. It's much needed. All right, guys. Well, that was a good episode. Yeah. That was, that was, that was good to talk about. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I got hit by a truck now, but it's, no. it's all good. It's all out on the table, on the floor, in your ears. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> make sure. Basically, it's a lose lose situation. <laughs> make sure to subscribe, you guys, and follow us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, follow us on at millennial underscore girls on Instagram. And of course, wait, you gotta follow our personals too Raquel Goldie and at Natasha Salahi. Yes. Yeah, see you guys next time. Peace, love, unicorns. Peace, love, unicorns. Bye. Bye.